Surprise! The cipher system has a thing called ciphers, which are, in a basic sense, the magic items of the cipher system. But since the cipher system is a genre neutral system to play any tabletop RPG genre in, the way we handle magic items in a fantasy RPG doesn't necessarily make sense for a sci fi uh, game, a modern day London game, or superheroes for that matter. So, Montiku Games created a system to have magic items make sense for any genre you want to play at your table. So, here's me taking five minutes of your time to explain ciphers in the cipher system. In general, there are two different types of ciphers. There are subtle ciphers and manifest ciphers. And since they're closest to what we know from games like Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder, I wanna first talk about manifest ciphers. Manifest ciphers are basically the magic items we know. They are physical items that have a magical or mechanical or biological effect, depending on the world you're playing in. And cipher system kind of dictates that you can only use them once. It might be a potion you drink, it might be a bit of uh, powder you sniff your nose or a vibrating ball that you throw and it explodes basically using it when you want to use it and it is gone when you have used it now subtle ciphers kind of do the same thing but they don't come in the form of physical objects they are not potions they are not powder they are not balls they are not a wand they are not that type of thing they are actually something from within the character uh Oftentimes, they're also like lesser in their effects. Uh, for example, a character might be carrying around a cipher that gives them a very good ID or a very good moment of insight somewhere in the game where the player decides they want to use it. And uh, it is up to the player and the game master to kind of tell the story around that when they use it, how, why they suddenly are able to open that door. If these tutorial videos provide you with any value in your life, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and consider supporting me on Ko-fi. Now, oftentimes when you as a player receive a cipher, you have to roll a d6 to determine its level, which of course determines things like how hard it is to destroy, but it can also determine how powerful it is. For example, you might find yourself a button that if you push it, you suddenly have extra armor or something like that. The level of the cipher might dictate how much extra armor you have. I'm going to fully admit that the first time I read about subtle ciphers, I wasn't really convinced and I wasn't really feeling it. But after playing the cipher system for a while, I actually noticed that subtle ciphers are an incredibly good way to tell a story. It actually invites conversation between you and your players. Now, since ciphers technically are single-use items, we as fantasy players do not really like that. We want to have our flaming sword of eternal blue flame to strike down every orc we get in our eyesight and we want that to be a magic item and this is where artifacts come in artifacts are basically exactly the same thing as manifest ciphers but they last Although the Cypher System rulebook covers this already, there is a book out there called God Forsaken, which I reviewed on this channel, which covers artifacts more deeply and has a bunch of artifacts that you can use and give to your players. They need to roll for a level for the artifact. They need to roll for what form it takes in the form of a potion or powder or a stone or maybe a wooden cross or something like that. And then its effect and how big its effect is according to its level. And then they can keep using it if they want to keep using it which in essence is exactly the same thing but use a game master and the players actually make it work for your world which is again an incredible storytelling mechanic now if you look at your character sheet for a player character you can see that there is a cipher limit this is the maximum amount of ciphers you can carry at the same time as a player character now this does not mean you cannot go over this maximum but going over this maximum has a lot of very big risks world changing and character changing risks now the reason why you can only carry this type of uh, this amount of magic items can differentiate again from jar for magic items uh, basically in a fantasy setting magic items are items that defy and change the, the, the physics and all of that stuff and vibrate in different ways and some come from the void and some come from the deep dark and some come and they all have different types of energy and putting them together in a backpack could have disastrous consequences and it is basically the same thing in the Numenera setting which is a science fantasy setting where all of the ciphers you find come from ancient civilizations and they talk about a vibration they have all every cipher has its 
own kind of like vibration but if you put them too close to each other it might conflict and have the same disastrous consequences that's it that's the basic stuff about ciphers you can now sit down and enjoy a game of the cipher system and actually use subtle ciphers manifest ciphers and artifact ciphers in your games